Today's Gospel is teaching us so gently about so important things. Jesus knew about the argument or the competition uh, among the disciples, among the twelve, that who is the greatest. But he didn't ask them on the road why. And this is the first, the first teaching for us. It's a serious question. Potentially it can divide the community of the twelve for good. So Jesus wants to settle this question in his home, in his home, in a safe place. Which home was safe for all the disciples? This home was full of peace and full of light. So in practical terms, when, we, when our heart is divided, or when our intellect is divided or confu and confused, the best place to reflect on what's happening to us is not on the way, not in the workplace, not, not in a busy city road or on a bus, but in prayer, or if we can, churches are hardly ever open these days against the will of God, but that's why still churches are open, chapels can be visited where Jesus is present, and then gently he can lead us, he can heal our inner divisions. The second thing what we can learn is about the question of will, the strength of our will. I often wonder why we Christians, even Christians, are often so reluctant to come to church. Some people come every Sunday, if they can, if they are healthy. Some come once a month, in every two months, half a year, despite the fact that they are healthy. And many of our brothers and sisters who are baptized, they abandon uh, the habit of going to church for good. Why do we come to church? And it has to do something with today's gospel, gospel question, that the one who wants to be the first must be the last. The one who wants to be the first must be the first in the service of others. It has to do with will, with willpower, the st with, with the strength of our will. Um, when a Christian comes to church, makes the effort of coming to the church, that person makes that decision as a disciple. Whenever we make the effort of worshipping God on a Sunday and we decide that, yes, I'm going to come to church tomorrow or today, that moment when we become disciples, when our discipleship is strengthened, it's a free decision. The same with serving others, putting others' needs in front of us. It would be convenient just to bypass the situation. But when we decide to serve that person in that situation, that moment we make a free decision. And this is at the heart of today's Gospel. The slave obeys only orders. It doesn't really matter for him what to do on his own initiative. He's always waiting. He is forced to do something. 
But the Christian, even more than Christian, the Christian disciple does things out of his free will, out of his decision. The one who puts others' needs to the top of the list and makes himself the last, it's not out of fear that on judgment day he is going to fail or she is going to fail. No, it's a loving, free decision in advance. And these are the two states of our heart and mind. We do something because we are forced to do, because we are in big trouble, then we go to church and pray, or we put ourselves to be the position of the last in the service of others on a daily basis, making a free decision, a free decision of a disciple. And it has to do with the strength of our will. Often, not often, it's all the time the case, if someone decides to be a Christian, you cannot do it in one step, like putting the car into fifth or sixth gear at once. We have to strengthen our will. And what does strengthen our will? Even a brief prayer. Those in the Catholic tradition who pray the simple sentence for the strengthening of our faith, faith increasing our hope and for the perfection of our uh, of our love, it strengthens our will. Those who say, and our Father, it strengthens our will. If someone says, a Hail Mary, it strengthens our will. But if we make that charitable act, it strengthens our will. And we become disciples, diakonos, who is, in, who is intent on the service he is rendering to others. The doulos, a slave, is one who takes orders from a master and thus serves him. So let us, our Lord, to correct our conception of what is a functioning free will, what is a functioning free mind? When we are putting our energies into the service of others and Christ, then we are free. And we are experiencing the gain of energy that we have the strength to do everything. And there is a third practical thing which we are invited to think about. This strengthening of our will has to do a lot with our ability to welcome a child. Those of, those of you who raised a child or who have been raising a child, you know that having a child, being a father or a mother, this is exactly the situation of a disciple. A parent always puts herself or himself to be the last position and makes the child's needs the first. It's a wonderful gift to have a child because you have the core experience of being a disciple who serves out of free will. And welcoming a child to a life, it's very important. Those who are given this gift and this call, it's very important for yourself and for the world. Because Jesus in the parable speaks of a child not metaphorically, not symbolically, that someone who is immature in faith who is coming back to the church, we need to give our support to him or her. That's correct. But Jesus, in his own home, invited a child who knew him 
and he spoke of a concrete child. And having taken a little child, he stood in their midst, and having taken it in his arms, he said to them, Whoever receives one of such little children on my name, he receives not me, but the one who commissioned me. We are receiving a child into life just as we receive God's revelation, or this is the way how we should receive God's revelation, with full commitment, making God's revelation in our life a priority, because that nourishes us. And if we receive God's revelation, what is written in the Bible, what, is, what we are listening to at the table of the Eucharist from this uh, pulpit, from the table of the word from this pulpit, and when we are receive, what we are receiving from the table of the Eucharist, it strengthens our will. It enables us to make that decision that I want to be in the serve, to be first in the service of Christ. I want to be the first in the service of my child, giving them the best, not only physically but spiritually. So let us receive today's Holy Communion as a humble request that our Lord increase our faith, strengthen our hope, and perfect our love to be able to be a disciple out of free will as often as we can. Amen.